A good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Looking at the Gospel of today, continuing with chapter 6 of the Gospel of John, one realizes from the beginning of this chapter there has been a steady development in the discourse of Jesus. The theme which remains central is bread, but he speaks of bread on different levels. At the beginning, he simply multiplied the loaves of bread and fed the multitude. Then he challenges people to work for bread that endures to eternal life. And he says to do this is to believe in him. Then from there he calls himself the bread of life. Whoever believes in him will not hunger, will not thirst, and he will raise that person to eternal life. And again, his calling is that they should or we should believe in him because he is the bread of life. And in the Gospel of today, something is changing. He is again on another level. It's no longer the issue of believing in him. He says he is the bread of life, and that bread is his flesh. Then he says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Now, with this development, this new development, you one realizes that Jesus is actually talking of the Eucharist. And it comes as a surprise to the Jews. They're saying, but does this man want us to eat his flesh? And he continues to say, unless you eat my flesh, unless you drink my blood, you have no life in you. You realize when we eat something, let's say I have a plate of meat. Yeah, I, I like meat. And I'm eating that meat. At the end of that meal, on the plate remains nothing. That which I was eating is no longer, does no longer exist outside on its own. It has, to a certain extent, gone out of existence. And Jesus talks of us eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Which means that to a certain extent, he goes out of existence. Then what happens? There is this saying which goes like we become what we consume. So as we eat his flesh, as we drink his blood, as he is no longer physically existent, Jesus begins to live in us. He draws life from the Father. And the life which he draws from the Father is the life which he gives to us. It is the life which he shares with us. St. Paul will say, it is no longer I who lives, but Jesus lives in me. So for us who are Christians, Whenever we celebrate the Eucharist, whenever we eat his flesh, whenever we drink his blood, Jesus does not cease to exist. As he comes into our lives, we cease to exist and we become what we have consumed, Christians another Christ. So that at the end of the Eucharist, when we are commissioned, when we are sent to go out, 
we have completely changed. We have been transformed completely. And what we present to the world wherever we go is no longer ourselves, but it is our transformed selves who are Christians, who are the other Christ. So I found this very, very profound. But something challenged me. There is a book which um, I read about the Eucharist by Henry Nowen. In that book, he says, how many times has bread been transformed to his flesh? How many times has wine been transformed into his blood? And how many times do I remain the same after partaking in that transformation? After receiving his body and his blood, after eating his flesh and his blood. This is where, dear brothers and sisters, I think the challenge is that when we receive that which has been transformed, we should be transformed ourselves. And when we ourselves are transformed, we stand a chance of going out there and transforming the world. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. As much as Jesus shares his life with us, the life which he receives from the Father, we are called to share our life with those we come in contact with. And it is no longer our life, but the life of Jesus, which we have allowed to come into our lives. It is the life of Jesus, which that Jesus which we have become Christians, another Christ. Christ-like. I think these are the difficult moments, difficult times, I should say, when we're locked down or not able to go to church. And one of the things which we miss, yes, is celebrating Mass, but receiving Jesus, receiving Jesus in the species of the bread and wine, the body and blood, his flesh and his blood. And yet, that does not stop Jesus coming into our lives. And yet, that does not take away the fact that we are Christians. And yet, that does not take away the fact that we are still sent to share that life which Jesus continues to give to us with our brothers and sisters. That it does not mean that we have stopped being transformed by what has been transformed. We continue to be transformed by him who comes to us. And we continue to have the duty to transform those we come in contact with. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that we may every day be more and more devoted to the Eucharist. That every day we may come to understand what exactly do we receive when we receive the Eucharist. That we receive Jesus himself. That we partake of his flesh and blood. And that we may allow that Jesus who comes into our lives to transform us and to use us to transform the world. Questions for discussion.
do I really see the body and blood of Christ in the species of bread and wine that are transformed during Mass? When Mass is celebrated, do I fully realize what is happening? Do I realize that actually heaven comes to earth? When Jesus becomes a reality in our midst, and when Jesus takes body in me, Do I realize what happens? And the last one. Do I realize the responsibility which is given to me when after receiving his body and blood, after eating his flesh and blood, when I'm sent, sent into the world? Do I realize that I'm sent not in my name, but in the name of Jesus, that I have become as a Christian. May God bless you all. Amen.